Hi everyone, welcome back to my educational channel. This is teacher Janet. And in this video, I want to give you an important and useful tip that can help you to be successful in your experiment. To be able to get the plant, the Hybula species plant, to produce the air bubbles or oxygen bubbles that can be counted, right? So uh, if you have followed the procedure in the test paper, right? A question paper and you've done everything and there are no air bubbles or gas bubbles you've tried all the instructions then you can try this because this uh, tip is recommended by teachers okay on the internet the youtubers the teachers who have uh, involved in practicals and they guarantee or they say that this method can help to cause the hydrilla species to produce the oxygen bubbles right so that you can count the number of gas bubbles or oxygen bubbles that are released in a given time like five minutes okay but first of all try to follow the procedure okay if another different procedure is given the test paper do all that you can follow it exactly to get the readings all right to be able to count the number of oxygen bubbles that are released okay however if you have tried everything and cannot work then this is the method actually that is uh, recommended by teachers involved. And I'm going to give you a link to the videos, two videos concerned, which show you how to carry out the experiment of investigating effect of light intensity on the rate of photosynthesis. So it, to give you an idea how it is done, okay? Because I believe some students have not uh, have done this experiment before, right? They may not have done this experiment, some may have. So if you have not done this experiment or you want to revise and have an idea how it is done, there are two videos that you can uh, view, which are very good, okay? That is, uh, that is for students. So uh, in other than investiga investigating effect of light intensity, uh, there's also investigating effect of uh, carbon dioxide concentration or temperature or even the effect of color of light like blue, green, and red light on the rate of photosynthesis. So all these photosynthesis experiments will need the student to count the number of air bubbles released in a given time as the responding variable, right? So we have to know how to get this plant and coax the plant, sort of coax the plant to produce the, the oxygen bubbles, okay? Which sometimes there's a problem, a difficulty. So um, let's see what the tip is uh, to ensure or to help you to be successful in your experiment and to get the readings. So you can refer to the two YouTube channels below to get an idea on how to carry out the whole experiment. Okay, that one is, uh, the experiment is about uh, investigating the effect of light intensity on the rate of photosynthesis. Now, I will put the link in the description box below the uh, video also, okay? So you can click on it. And the first one is a video by Mel Spurry, Mel Spurry Education, all right? At 1 minute 30 seconds, you can see the technique of how to cut the stem using a scissors before we start doing the experiment, before they start doing the experiment. Now, this second uh, video by Science and Plants for Schools at 5 minutes 40 seconds, you can see also the technique of how they cut the stem. It's quite similar to the first video. And uh, the relevant part is somewhere from 5.40 to 8 minutes. The rest, if you want to view, you can, but it could be a waste of time. Huh? You can skip the rest uh, of the video if you want. Or you can also uh, view the, the later part about the color of light. Okay, How to do the, the experiment using... Um, to test or to investigate the effect of color of light on the rate of photosynthesis. Now, practical tip. What's the practical tip that was shown in these two videos at this time? Okay, basically, just before you start doing the experiment, you have already placed the hydrilla or the elodia plant or the aquatic plant upside down in the top water first. Okay, so place the aquatic plant like elodia or hydrilla upside down in a test tube a boiling tube i think it's a boiling tube okay and then in the boiling tube there's already the sodium hydrogen carbonate solution right 
So put the plant upside down. They say put the plant upside down in the boiling tube. And you will see that the end is usually not slanted right. Huh? So you make a fresh cut here by using a scissors. So put the scissors in the boiling tube and then cut the end of the stem here. This is the stem. So cut the end of the stem at a slant, slanting. Huh? Under water in the sodium, actually it's under the solution, in the water, huh? in the sodium hydrogen carbonate solution itself. Okay, so the, surrounding the plant is the sodium hydrogen carbonate solution to supply carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. So this will allow the stem, and I see the stem has been cut in a slanted uh, pattern, uh, and this will allow the stem to start producing the oxygen bubbles. Probably the oxygen bubbles travel through the vessels uh, inside the plant, okay, and then it comes out at the end here. And you can see tiny bubbles start being formed at this end, uh, which represents the top end now, but actually it's the bottom part of the plant. Uh. And then we can count these bubbles. Okay, we can count how many of these gas bubbles or oxygen bubbles are released in five minutes or maybe in two minutes or one minute, depending on the question. So read the question carefully. Now again, I want to stress, uh, if the question has instructed you to do otherwise, to do another method, you follow the method given in the in the question paper. So unless there's no method given and you have trouble getting the bubble uh, to appear, then this is one technique that is used and recommended by these educators. In fact, uh, these educators are probably teaching the GCSE science uh, and they are, they are in, in that book or in that uh, the notes uh, concern mention this technique of turning the plant upside down and cutting the stem in a slanted way, okay, underwater. So here again is the practical tip in the form of a flow chart, right, to make it clearer. Now, firstly, the plant is turned upside down like this, and then you place the plant, number two, in a boiling tube that contains the sodium hydrogen carbonate solution, right? Then the upper end here, the top part of the stem, this is actually the bottom part of the plant, actually, uh, but you turn it upside down. So it's on the upper end now. So the upper end or top part of the stem is cut at a slant using a pair of scissors that is inserted into the sodium hydrogen carbonate solution. So the, cut, the cutting of the stem is done inside the solution of the sodium hydrogen carbonate solution uh, inside that. Now, this is to prevent the air from blocking the cut end. Air from outside, uh, if it gets into the cut end, to, into the vessels, then it can block the oxygen that's produced inside from coming out. Okay, so uh, we cut a slanted, cut it in a slanted uh, fashion or manner. And this is to increase the surface area here so that a bigger bubble may be produced, right? Now you can see the bubble being produced and slowly popping up from the stem, coming up from the stem, emerging from the stem, and then it float upwards. So you count here how many bubbles are released, okay? In one minute or two minutes or five minutes, etc., depending on the question. So again, I'd like to stress that you only use this method when you have followed all the procedure in the the exam paper uh, and you can't get the result then this is the method recommended by the uh, experienced teachers who have done this experiment before and by the way before you start the experiment once you put the plant inside the boiling tube you have to wait a while for the plant to adapt itself to the conditions the new conditions all right so after every uh, the experiment involving the light, the light intensity, eh? you have to stop for a while and then start anew again and put the plant in the new sodium hydrogen carbonate solution and wait a few minutes, eh? depending on the time given, eh? to let it stabilize and start producing the bubbles again. So this is how it will look like, alright? 
If you are RG, it's the time to record the number of gas bubbles released in 5 minutes. If you try this technique, then the air bubble, the big air bubble will come out from the stem, okay, inverted stem, and it will rise to the surface and then disappear. So, in the exam, we do not know what the RV would be, okay? It could be the same like this, count and record the number of gas bubbles released in 5 minutes, or it could be slightly different or modified, whatever, okay? We do not know. Now, however, if it's the same, to count and record the number of gas bubbles released in 5 minutes, firstly, you follow the instructions in the uh, question paper, alright? And then, if you cannot uh, get the air bubbles coming up, then you try this method, alright? And who knows, maybe they will also propose this method where you cut the stem, the end of the stem, in a slanted way to help release the air bubbles, alright, uh, to the surface, and to count the number of air bubbles released in 5 minutes. So we cannot count the air bubbles that are sticking onto the uh, leaves, because they are very tiny, and there are many of them, alright, and you, some of them won't probe upwards, okay? So the practical way is to count the bubbles coming out from the main stem here, alright? Anyway, you have to modify according to your discretion and uh, follow the instructions first of all, all right, from the uh, question paper. That's very important. Thanks for viewing and goodbye for now.